Welcome to the Money Hour with host Tina Mitchell and co-host Keelan Harvey. Tina Mitchell, MLO 145420, and Keelan Harvey, MLO 1330075, are licensed loan originators with Highlands Residential Mortgage Limited, NMLS 134871. The views expressed by the speakers on the following program are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of Highlands Residential Mortgage Limited, nor are they necessarily endorsed by Highlands Residential Mortgage Limited. Now, in the studio, local mortgage experts, Tina Mitchell and Keelan Harvey. Welcome to the Money Hour at 1150 AM, KKNW, the Friday, March 12th virtual show. Because of COVID, we're still temporarily virtually. You can listen to us on podcast or catch us on air on Saturday at 3 p.m. with a rebroadcast on Sunday at 8 a.m. I am your host, Tina Mitchell. And I'm your co-host, Keelan Harvey bringing in expert advice and inside knowledge on today's events and how they can affect your money. If you are hearing our show at a different time or day, you are listening to a rebroadcast. We are here to connect you with the guests that we have on the show. Please call the show at 1-855-411-50. Again, that's 1-855-411-50 or online at themoneyhour.com. And our lineup for today's show, today we're gonna have a panel conversation with our two guests, we have Kathy Clayton of Kathy Clayton Coaching, and we have Holly Margal of Native Light Photography. We're also going to be having a conversation with Kathy. If you want a different reality, choose acceptance instead of resistance. And followed conversation with Holly, how to hire the best photographer for your special reputation. Great information and great guests on the show today. For more information on any topics discussed or questions that you may have for our guests, please call the show at 1-855-411-50. Again, that's 1-855-411-50 or online at themoneyhour.com. And we'll start out today's show as we do each week with a little bit of money chat. Money. Money. Keelan, are you making money, spending money? What do you have for our listeners today? Uh, hopefully a little bit of all, actually. <laughs> I was, uh, it, actually, you're in line with the theme. I was going to talk about bidding over ask because we've kind of talked about some of these things in pieces, but I wanted to kind of put it together in one piece for our listeners. And as we both know, the market is absolutely insla- insane right now, and it hasn't slowed down a bit. I mean, if anything, it's sped up. Um, so, but we touched on a couple of these items before and the reasons why, but I want to remind our listeners um, and offer a little bit of advice. So it's the old classic uh, supply and demand issue that we're facing starting with supply we already had low inventory before covid hit and then building stopped for about six months which has put an even more extreme low inventory scenario and then demand especially lately has risen too and i mean really lately it's gotten pretty crazy so really low rates uh have become a new norm for a while now and people kind of got used to it and we can finally see some light at the end of the tunnel uh with this whole covid thing so we might be seeing an end to this reality that we've been living in and with that people are starting to think about moves, I think, going forward after, you know, life after COVID, if that's a thing. Uh, so on top of that, stimulus is going through the roof and causing inflationary pressures, um, which those inflationary fears, as we've talked about, um, have raised interest rates. So people are starting to wonder if they're going to miss the boat now. Um, and really a very effective way, as we know, to motivate people is the fear of missing out, missing out the old shoulda, woulda, coulda, right? So I think a combination of these things has really lit a fire under a lot of people people who are on the fence. Uh, So now it's even more of an extreme perfect storm with this extremely high demand and this extreme low uh, supply or lack of supply. So, um, and with that, homes are appreciating faster than ever at this point. I looked at uh, my house the other day and now I just bought this in June and it's got up a hundred thousand dollars. Now, granted, I got a pretty good deal on my house. I didn't know how good at the time, but that's absolutely insane to me. And I'm in Snohomish County. So, So things are appreciating even faster in King counties and certain parts of King counties um, are going to go even faster than that. So this has created some fear in buyers and I wanted to provide a little bit of advice about it. So uh, arbitrary numbers here, but if you're looking to buy a house at 700 K, you need to adjust the price of your home. You're looking at, you need to be looking at more like the 600 K range, maybe less, maybe a little bit more, but the point is you need to think about escalation on these homes that you're looking at and reduce the price that you're looking at to allow 
room for escalation because if you put all your chips in at 700k there's another guy out there that is that is uh going down basically in his price who's got room to escalate so you're now the small fish in the big pond so you got folks out there who are dipping down to that 700k price um and so if you're going to be looking around there you need to be dipping down to like a 600k price and you can escalate up to 700k this gives you an advantage now because now guess what you're the big fish so that for some people comes as a fear with the fact of man am i overpaying for this house so i wanted to look at that too really quick so let's say that you chose to escalate to 750 you would actually break even in 53 months that's four years and four months you'd break even on your home your home is expected to appreciate according to experts in 53 months to 767,893 dollars in 53 months and then of course it's not going to stop there right you still live in the home at year seven it's 866,000 and at year 10 it's 1 million 39 and depending on your time horizons and what you choose to do if you want to rent it or move out or whatever you want to do you could imagine the equity you had on your hundred and fifty thousand dollar investment there so situations boss here i mean it seems kind of extreme but it's really not we've seen some of these even worse some better we are seeing some come through that are kind of in that middle range or that kind of more normal range where it doesn't escalate that high necessarily but the point is to go find your dream home and if you're going to stretch yourself the time is to stretch yourself right now the bigger fear for us on our side is interest rates going up on that same deal your prince rest Principal and interest would have been 2360 if at 3% rate. If it goes up to 4%, it'd go to 2673. That's a $313 difference per month just in the first month. And you imagine the amortization over that time. So don't be shy. My advice to the listeners is if you need some data about that, talk to me and Tina. We have the tools and the resources to make you feel a whole lot better about it because it seems kind of crazy, but it's really not. And in the long haul, you're going to win. Great money chat. And I love, yeah, you definitely do not want to be a small fish in a big pond. And that sense of urgency, we've talked about inflation and really the only thing you have to hedge against inflation is real estate and gold, maybe Krypton. So get in, have a sense of urgency. And this is Tina Mitchell here with my mortgage minutes. The classic song, Fast Car from Tracy Chapman. So I remember we were driving, driving in your car, speed so fast, I felt like I was drunk. All right, no music or no uh, hymn beh tone behind that. I hope that you're off to a good start. Yes, Christina Lagarde, head of the ECB. She has a fast car and she's getting off to a great start. She wants to buy bonds at a lot faster. They did help the yields drop a little bit, certainly in, the, in Europe and in Germany. We saw that come down in the U.S. because they are all interrelated. Yields did set back down a little bit and mortgage bonds get a little boost at five basis points, really nothing, not enough to see any movement in the mortgage interest rates, but we will take it. With regards to the stock, well, what do you think? <laughs> They're off and running again. The NASDAQ and pre-markets up. Man, this has been quite a ride in the stock market. With regards to Christina, Christine Lagarde saying that we are going to buy bonds faster to keep the economic recovery stable and ongoing, that is not enough. And as I mentioned, in the bond price is a boost and probably bleeding over into the stock market as well. Now, here in the US, we're going to be hearing from the Fed next week, and they will, are they going to join and do something like the Operation Twist? Or or will they be talking about perhaps buying a little bit more? Tuesday, 10-year treasury note option was okay, and the bond market responded okay to it as well. It wasn't a great option, and I think it was a sigh of relief from when we had a terrible seven-year note option and the bond market didn't like that at all. That was reasonable, and I think that there was that little bit of a relief. Now, it's been just one year how time does fly when the World's Health Organization said that the coronavirus that was used to be what it was called now, known as COVID-19, but it was a pandemic situation. How quickly time passes, and as a result of that, so many jobs were lost. Now we're starting to see some recovery, not as fast as we would like to see in the job market, but here is a breakdown. Over the last week, we saw the initial job claims numbers at a little over 700,000, which is an improvement, and those 
Are people filing the benefits for the first time continue claims a little over 4 million? Now, both of these, when you look at the media and other headlines, are pandemic lows. But if you take a quicker, a little, little closer look at a deeper dive, of this is the expiration of benefits with the look at the pandemic unemployment assistance as well as emergency claims each of those went up a million to pandemic highs so getting past the initial and continuing and going forward the ones that are extended now what is going on to be is what's going on is going to be interesting to see how the stimulus package of 1.9 trillion president biden package was passed by the house and the senate and has been signed by biden hit his desk if that does occur, it expands the benefits, which were expiring on March 14th for a longer period of time, and that is going to extend the pandemic unemployment assistance with emergency claims out, but also the additional $300, $300 people are receiving in benefits are, while that's probably a good thing for many people, a lot, it is uh, going to have a deterrent for them maybe going back to work on their jobs because they might be making a little bit more money and those additional best benefits. It's going to be interesting to see how the effect to the growth, job growth is going to come in the, in the coming reports. Overall, it looks like an improvement on the headlines, but not really seeing too much in the way of the things improving overall basis. We also did get CoreLogic in, and this is for Q4 of 2020. Man, oh man, or woman, oh woman, homeowners have seen equity on the rise and are over 16% year over year. Those with negative equ equity uh, is down 21% year over year, making up only 2.8% of all mortgages. If we go back to 2009, homeowners with negative equity represented over 28% of all homeowners. What a market difference that we are here today. A lot of people are worried about forbearance and what the impact will have. Well, as you can see, a lot of homeowners have tons of equity and it's in high demand. So if they want to, they can just turn around and sell their property, have a big chunk of cash on hand. Also in this report, CoreLogic said that renters want a piece of the equity and we can start seeing return renters coming in as first-time home buyers. And that is my money chat for you today. Coming up next in the Money Hour, panel conversation with Kathy Clayton of Kathy Clayton Coaching and Holly Margell of Native Light Photography right here on 1150 AM KKNW. Alternative Talk 1150. We're on your radio at 1150 AM. We're on your HD radio at 98.9 Channel 3. So many ways to listen. We're on the web at 1150kknw.com. Streaming live audio and video as well as MP3 archives of many of our shows. So many ways to listen. And now, we're on your smartphone or tablet. Download our free app in the Apple App Store or Google Play and take Alternative Talk 1150 anywhere you go. So many ways to listen. You came to the right place. Alternative Talk, 1150. You're listening to The Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell, and co-host, Keelan Harvey, on Alternative Talk, AM 1150. Now, back to the show with local mortgage experts, Tina Mitchell and Keelan Harvey. You are listening to The Money Hour on 1150 AM KKNW, the Friday, March 12th virtual show. We are currently temporarily virtual. You can also catch us on podcast and on air on Saturday at 3 p.m. with a rebroadcast on Sunday at 8 a.m. I am your host, Tina Mitchell. And I'm your co-host, Keelan Harvey. It is a great day to talk about money, and that is what our show is all about. How to make money, save money so you can have a better quality of life for you and your family. If you are listening to our show at a different time or day, you are listening to a rebroadcast. We are here to connect you with our guests. If you'd like to answer and ask any questions or on any topic that we've discussed, please call the show at 1-855-411-50. Again, that's 1-855-411-50 or online at themoneyhour.com. And now on our show, our panel conversation with our two amazing guests, Kathy Clayton of Kathy Clayton Coaching and also Holly Margell of Native Light Photography. 
right here on 1150 AM KKNW. Welcome ladies to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. I'm enjoying being here. And it is actually great. Keelan loves it when the show is just all girls. Okay, we do have Benny, our engineer behind scenes, but I appreciate right here that. Thank you. on our virtual show. <laughs> so before we get started, I'd like to share a little bit about our two guests, Kathy Clayton of Kathy Clayton Coaching. In her 25 years of practice, Kathy coaches her clients on how to change, how to relate to everything and everyone more successfully how to have the life and experiences that you want, and how to accept all that life presents. By helping clients move beyond their BS, side note, stands for basic story, or also stands for basic story, powerful insights and personal breakthroughs quickly emerge so that you can enjoy the fruits of your efforts. Kathy, honed these skills by walking her talk as she only asks her clients what she is willing to do herself by customizing the coaching with a neogram and a motivational assessment. Kathy's intuitive understanding of people and the worlds at large help her clients take action on what they, what really matters to them. And a little bit about our second guest, Holly Margell of Native Light Photography. Born and raised in Seattle, Washington, Holly has worked with a variety of small business owners and taught adults through continued education classes at local college extension programs. She fell in love with photography as a kid with a Polaroid camera. Didn't we all have one of those? Well, maybe not Keelan. He's a little bit young. Uh, but it wasn't until a deep loss in her family that she was inspired to follow her passion to be a full-time photographer. Choosing to serve the small business community in 2015, she launched Native Light Photography. This honors her Native American heritage as a member of the Eastern Shawnee tribe of Oklahoma. She brings her perspective, vision, and intuitive people skills to every client to create photographs that they love. I'm going to start with you, Kathy. Um, I would love to hear more about what brought you into your line of work. Thank you, Keelan. I have always been interested in the big questions. And as a little kid, I always wanted to know more about what makes life tick. And growing up, religion was off limits in my family in terms of really pursuing that. And so once I got to college, I majored in history with minors in econ and philosophy. And then after college, I was still deeply curious about how do I take everything that I'm learning and begin applying it in real life? And an ex-boyfriend introduced me to some personal growth classes and I fell in love with the content. And all of a sudden I had a way to translate all these things that I'd been learning into practical action. And it changed my life. I ended up working for the company for a couple of years. And it was in that environment that I really learned how to be a coach. And in 1996, um, I joke that a, uh, a door slammed shut and a window I had to open because of the force because I was fired for the first and only time in my life. And that same week I was offered a consultancy with a motivational assessment that identifies motivations. And so that was how my coaching career was started. And I have not looked back. Sounds like what a blessing it was that you got fired from your job. Oh, yes, it was. <laughs> Sometimes those things force you to get out of your comfort zone and really find your passion. So that's really cool that that happened to you because it happens to all of us, I think, at some point in life. What about you, Holly? Uh, what brought you into your line of work? Yeah, well, as Tina shared earlier, I've always loved photography as a kid. It was a hobby that I pursued. Um, and then I actually thought I wanted to go into photo photojournalism, but that was in the early 2000s, 2000, 2001. And as some people might remember, the Associated Press started laying off photojournalists at that time and digital photography took off. So I viewed that um, passion as a side hobby hustle and I always had a day job doing that on the side. So I started this business because I saw a need in the marketplace to serve business owners and career professionals. You know, everybody knew a wedding photographer and a family photographer, but there was really no one to like take a headshot at an affordable rate for the small business owner. And so I was motivated by people in my community and also my desire to really make this 
this um, a business that I could merge my passion with like needing to earn an income. Yeah, what a perfect balance, bringing in your passion and the need that you see that what you have to offer mm -hmm. needed in your market. Yes. Kathy, uh, what's happening currently in your industry right now? So th this is an interesting question because I've actually always been on the outside of my industry. When I started my coaching practice in 1996, coaching was a nascent industry and I just jumped in. So I actually never went down the path of certification and I've not actually stayed very connected to what's happening with the industry as a whole. But what I do see is that there are so many more people finding their voice, jumping into coaching, recognizing their expertise and really learning how to guide others to have the kinds of results and experiences they're looking for. And so there's lots of really, really good people out there doing coaching across so many different spectrums that it's really lovely to see. Yeah, isn't it interesting in the last, I don't know, maybe 10 years or less where you've seen so many different coaches, coaches coming out. And I think it's just all of the inspiration and motivation that's happening in our world that really, mm -hmm. um, and stories and people getting through things that brings them into their industry. So yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Holly, what about for you? What's happening in your industry? Yeah. So photography as a whole is seeing a lot of, um, I say rough waters, right? So all of the event photographers, wedding photographers, they've really been hit pretty hard. You know, photography is a luxury item. It's not an essential. So what I'm seeing now is things are starting to open back up and businesses are starting to be able to operate are that people really want to see you in your business. It's, it's beyond the corporate headshot. Now they want to see, who you are, they want to see what you do, they want to see you in your business. So for example, um, even someone like a tax accountant who's in high demand, you know, somebody's going to look at your website, they're going to have a first impression of you. Do you have a current headshot? Are there men and women who work at your firm? You know, they kind of want to see who you are and a little bit more about you. So I, I see photography in the branding and business arenas, they're really thriving and growing right now. Yeah. And I would say photography, it, it is essential. I mean, if you, if you have, if you are able to get out there and have a life experience, all, obviously that's been shut down, but it's, it's essential that you capture those moments in photography. And just as you talked about them and Keelan and I are going to ask you some questions to go into more detail on this. It's critically important and essential that you are representing yourself the best that you can through picking the best photographer that you can, uh, as you stated there, uh, Holly. Tina, you took the words out of my mouth. I was going to say the exact same thing, especially I'm considering we're just virtual taking now. The words out of your life. We, we I know, right, definitely. <laughs> um, Kathy, we're going to switch over to you, and um, I'm curious to know, and this is always such a fun answer to get. What do you love most about what you do? There isn't anything I don't love about my work because I am so committed to working on myself as a human. I now get to bring my insights, my learning to my clients. And so I'm always engaged in continuing education about how do I apply the tools that I work with in a better, more effective way. And I think what I love most is that as people start discovering who and how they really are through the process that I've created, the ahas come so fast, so furiously, because they're realizing, oh my gosh, this is who I am. But more importantly, what I love is that I'm able to teach my clients how to apply those insights. And that's very different because it's one thing to get the information. It's another thing to know what to do with it. And that's where my real passion comes in is that I'm able to really help my clients translate what they're learning into reality. And what a beautiful thing. You were creating the space for them to personally have that aha moment. And it isn't it great that you get to expedite that process because sometimes it takes people forever and sometimes they never figure it out at all because our lives are a moving target and what makes us happy and having a professional is key to helping you do that. So it's a, such a wonderful thing you do, Kathy. And I want to ask you the same question, Holly. What is the thing you love most about what you do? It's really the people that I get to meet. Um, I find small business owners um, and even career professionals to be at a really interesting time in their lives when they choose to hire a photographer. So I get to be a small part of that story, right? I get to help them 
elevate who they are to continue to thrive in whatever arena that is, whether they're leveling up and they're going to get a job promotion and or they're going to become a speaker and they're going to be on a panel. Um, it's just an exciting time to meet people and 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 meet them where they're at in their lives. They're usually very optimistic and excited for the future. Kathy, what is one thing that you do to best serve your clients? Really, it's I teach them how to use the information they're getting so that yeah. long after we're done, they're continuing their growth and development. Yeah, putting together that plan and that process and that next steps and how to continue to level up once you give them the tools that they need and again, creating that space, right? Yeah. Holly, how about for you? Yeah, so I would say my secret power is helping people feel comfortable in front of a camera. Most people are not. Um, and that's something that I learned a long time ago is that I'm a, I'm a people person. So making them comfortable really helps them shine and look their best. Yeah, and I, I think Keelan's probably already thinking this, but um, secret power, I like that. Uh huh. Did you say secret power or superpower? I did say secret power. <laughs> secret, power. Secret, secret, secret power is awesome. All right. Well, that was a great, a great panel conversation uh, with both of you. It's really uh, nice for our listeners to be able to hear a little bit more as we have a conversation with the two of you together. Coming up next on the Money Hour, if you want a different reality, choose acceptance instead of resistance. Kathy Clayton of Kathy Clayton Coaching right here on 1150 AM KKNW. The Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell and co-host Keelan Harvey every Saturday from 3 to 4 p.m. right here on KKNW AM 1150. Join the show to experience expert advice and knowledge on today's events in our local economy that can affect your money. That's every Saturday from 3 to 4 p.m. with a repeat show on Sundays at 8 a.m. For more information about The Money Hour radio show and their guests, visit themoneyhour.com. That's themoneyhour.com. This is Alternative Talk 1150. You're listening to The Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell, and co-host, Keelan Harvey, on Alternative Talk AM 1150. Now, back to the show with local mortgage experts, Tina Mitchell and Keelan Harvey. You are listening to The Money Hour on 1150 AM KKNW, the Friday, March 12th virtual show. You can also catch us, catch us on podcast or on air on 1150 AM KKNW, Saturday at 3 p.m. with a rebroadcast on Sunday at 8 8 a.m. I am your host, Tina Mitchell. And I'm your co-host, Keelan Harvey. We are here to help you build a strong financial blueprint, one week and one show at a time. If you are hearing our show at a different time or day, you are listening to a rebroadcast. We are here to connect you with the guests that we have on the show, to answer any questions on any topic discussed today. Please call the show at 1-855-411-1150. Again, that's one 855 400 1150 or online at themoneyhour.com. And still in studio with us for the entire show, we have Kathy Clayton of Kathy Clayton Coaching. If you want a different reality, choose acceptance instead of resistance, right here on 1150 AM KKNW. So diving right into this, um, is choosing acceptance necessary? Absolutely not. You can stay in resistance as long as you like, and many people do stay in resistance to reality. It's just that you're not going to move forward very quickly or effectively as long as you're resisting reality. So, Kathy, how do you define the difference between reality and fantasy? Well, I think we all had fantasy around how quickly this pandemic would go away. And then we were quickly slammed into the wall of reality that said, oh, wait, we're actually not going to go back out into the world anytime soon. We're not going to be engaging in the ways that we wanted to. And even then, when reality sunk in, it didn't really sink in for a lot of people. And so anytime you are hearing the word should from yourself, from someone else, you're in fantasy because you're wanting something to be different than how reality actually is. 
Wow, you hit that on the head. Tina mentioned that. She said we're coming up to a year of this. And mm -hmm. for me, it seems like molasses. Like we've been here forever. Like it's going to be weird to go back. So uh, yeah, we all thought it was going to be a quick thing. Well said. Um, what about the difference between reaction and response after the fact? Well, too often what happens, people have, everyone has a reaction to whatever is going on in life. And too often people make their reaction, their response. And that often doesn't turn out very well. And when someone can recognize, oh, I'm having my reaction. I feel really intense about this, or I don't know what I want to do with it. It then allows someone to have a pause to then choose how are they going to respond? And it's in that moment that they then get to choose. Am I going to accept reality? Am I going to resist reality? And the thing about resisting reality, it then takes them into a cycle of resenting reality and resenting what is going on. And oftentimes we then move into a place of wanting to sabotage, get even with someone or sabotage ourselves. And then sometimes guilt shows up and we start that whole cycle of resist, resent, revenge all over. Whereas if someone decides to choose acceptance, it's saying, I accept reality as it is. But the key thing, acceptance doesn't mean you like it. It just means it's true. Because there's a whole bunch about life that I don't like, but I accept is true. And the moment someone can move into that place of deep acceptance of who and how they are, who and how others are, who and how life is, they can suddenly be on purpose, their purpose, to both create and allow what they're certain is most important to them they become masterful in their life. They're the ones that are actually in control of where their life is going. I love that on purpose for their purpose. And we know this is true because people have are living the same reality mm -hmm. to the extent of people are in the same industry, businesses are closing down and they have a whole different acceptance of what that looks like or what it is brought to them some stuck in the challenge and other finding the opportunity, just as we talked about you uh, getting fired from your job. Obviously, you created an ex a space of acceptance that allowed you to actually move forward with the opportunity that was waiting right there for you, because I believe the opportunity is waiting there for everyone in any challenge. So, Kathy, I've worked for many years to create a positive space for myself so that I can be my best self for others. And I do this by recognizing and appreciating the challenging thoughts, then making an intentional decision to put my focus on something that will serve me at a higher level. So how do you coach your clients around how to stop living from a reactive place? Great question. And this is one of the things that sets me apart in terms of how I do my coaching. I am impatient. I don't want to waste a lot of time guessing who my clients are, how they're wired, what their motivations are. So I work with two very powerful assessments. One is called the Enneagram, and the other is a motivational assessment that reveals how this person is wired, what their motivations are, what their point of view is. And the reason this is important, I as a coach, I can coach from my perspective. But if the other, if my client isn't wired that way, then it's not gonna land well. Instead, if I know their motivations, if I know their point of view, I can suddenly begin coaching them based on how they're wired and what their point of view is. The reason that's important, now when someone finally gets that, oh, I'm wired this way, they don't have to be resisting who they really are. They can recognize, oh yeah, I'm gonna naturally default to a negative thought because that's my wiring. Instead of having that person make themselves wrong, they can recognize their immediate reaction is, oh, I'm gonna always go into a place of defense. Okay, I've done that now. Now I get to choose, do I continue on that line of defense or can I choose a different way of looking at it? Whereas another person might immediately have a, the, the, the sky is always blue, the sky is, everything is always happy. But that may not necessarily serve. And so by recognizing your innate response, you then get to pause and choose what's necessary in the next moment that fits with reality. 
Yeah, so true. Really coming from an authentic space of mm -hmm. where your feelings are currently at. And this is why it's so exciting to have Kathy here uh, if you are listening today, because you really need the best of the best coach that can meet you where you are at and slowly take you through the process. And again, bring in your why, your story, and where that's all coming from to mm -hmm. dig deep to really get you to uh, a, a high level and a high space of consciousness. Yes. That's a hard word to say. Yeah. Go ahead. I, I love that, Kathy. I, somebody said something. I, I always, I'm always reading or listening to something that your action is your vote. It's not going to happen all the way, but what do you choose to put your vote towards? And stepping back to make that choice is huge. That's a fantastic thing that you can do. And it's not easy because we're emotion, emotional people, correct? Um, what, I, th when you're talking about that, I was trying to figure out what the heck's an Enneagram. <laughs> well, let me spell that for I the audience. I even say it. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the Enneagram. There we go. Enneagram. It well, it's spelled E-N-N-E-A-G-R-A-M. And Ennea is Greek for nine. And this is a nine-sided object. And it represents nine unique points of view. And it is, in essence, a map of humanity. It comes out of observing how humans naturally show up. And we have all nine types within us to greater or lesser degree, but one of them is our home point. And we always have access to other points as well. And it's, to be honest, it is a complex tool. I like that. We are complex beings. Let's work with a tool that meets and honors that complexity. And so I teach my clients how to work with this resource. So long after we're done with the coaching, they can continue their growth. And ultimately, it's about recognizing the three centers of intelligence, head, heart, and body, so that clients can inhabit all three of those centers and they can access the capacity that is available, but oftentimes we shut off because we're either afraid of it, we don't know what to do with it, or we don't have direct access to it. Yeah. So, Kathy, everyone has a point of view and knowing what it is, is critically important. How is knowing your point of view helpful? Well, the power of knowing your point of view is that you can relax because if suddenly you recognize, oh, for example, I'm a head type, I'm going to automatically live in my head. I'm going to make a mental framework of how the world's going to go. I'm not going to default to my heart. That's just not who I am. It doesn't mean I don't go to my heart but I'm going to default to thinking about something. And by recognizing that, whether it's a gut base or a heart base or a head base, you can relax because you're not going to be resisting who you really are. So we come full circle back to that place of acceptance. It was interesting because it kind of sounds like a personality test because I'm definitely heart. I am not head. I'm, I'm going in with my heart and I'm going to trust that. So it's interesting. Um, that would be, it, it would be great to really be able to see, you know, what things and determine uh, what you are. But most of us know you said head and I'm like, yeah, no, nah, I'm, I'm heart a hundred percent. Well, and this, this really is a personality type indicator at its, at its simplest, but I take people much deeper to really know how to utilize it. Kathy, when we have we have a lot of amazing guests, including yourself, on here, and one thing they all have in common is they figured out their why. And then once they figure out their why, usually the next question is how. So how what why is knowing how important? Because we are drowning in information. Anyone could gather the information that I use in my coaching practice, but if you don't know how to apply the information. You end up tossing it in a drawer. You, you think, oh my gosh, I've got all these great insights, but you don't know what to do with it. And too often we are not focusing on how do you do something and how do you tailor it based on how you're wired, not on how someone else does it. So this is truly customized because you will get stuck. Yeah, and that takes us um, right into Kathy, the question I wanted to ask you and because you have, to, again, it's all about authenticity of your own space, but recognizing that somebody else is going to be in a different space or a different way that they're dealing things, dealing with things. So can you share how this, what we're talking about here today is going to have a big impact, positive or negative on your relationships? 
Oh, oh my gosh. It depends on how aware and conscious someone is because we are in relationship 100% of the time. It's not just to other humans. We have relationships to money, to pictures, to our bodies, to our homes. And it's only when those relationships aren't working that people reach out. And until someone understands how they are relating, they cannot begin to change that relationship. And so we really have to pull people back to say, okay, if you want to change your marriage, you have to understand yourself first and then be curious about the other person. Because it's only in curiosity that you're going to create the open space and the acceptance to allow change to emerge. So I hate to say this, Kathy, but we're about out of time. So this has got to be a quick answer because we're diving into our last minute bit here. But how does someone relate more successfully to have the results and experiences they want in life? They have to get curious about themselves. They have to really understand who and how they are and learn how to apply that information in positive, constructive ways, because only then are they going to have the long lasting success and experiences they want. I love that. What a great way to end our time with you because curiosity really is magical. Get curiosity about yourself. Be curiosity about life. Ask yourself questions whenever making a statement, which could be known as affirmations, then ask a question behind that statement. I wonder how, I wonder who is going to connect me to that. So Kathy, uh, what a beautiful conversation with you and what an amazing uh, service that you're providing in this area of helping people to be the best for themselves, because only after you reach that level, can you be of service to anyone else. So it's a pleasure having you here, Kathy. Thank you so much, Tina and Keelan. Coming up next on the Money Hour, how to hire the best photographer for your social reputation. Holly Margell of Native Light Photography, right here on 1150 AM KKNW. Alternative Talk 1150. We're on your radio at 1150 AM. We're on your HD radio at 98.9 Channel 3. So many ways to listen. We're on the web at 1150kknw.com. Streaming live audio and video as well as MP3 archives of many of our shows. So many ways to listen. And now, we're on your smartphone or tablet. Download our free app in the Apple App Store or Google Play and take Alternative Talk 1150 anywhere you go. So many ways to listen. Talk radio with a purpose. Alternative Talk 1150. You're listening to The Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell, and co-host, Keelan Harvey, on Alternative Talk AM 1150. Now, back to the show with local mortgage experts, Tina Mitchell and Keelan Harvey. You are listening to The Money Hour on 1150 AM KKNW, the Friday, March 12th virtual show. You can also catch us on podcast or on air on Saturday at 3 p.m. with a rebroadcast on Sunday at 8 a.m. I am your host, Tina Mitchell. I'm your co-host, Keelan Harvey. We bring into studio each week the best of the best experts in our local market on everything regarding your money. We are here to help you in today's economy. And now in studio, Holly Margell of Native Light Photography, how to hire the best photographer for your social reputation, right here on 1150 AM KKNW. Holly, my first question to you would be, I know sometimes professionals get confused about the timing on when they should get uh, photographs. You know, they think they need to maybe be established or, you know, uh, those type of things. So in your opinion, when's the right time for yourself to get professional photographs uh, or get some pictures for your business, of course? Yeah, it's a wonderful question. And really, it's a matter of when are you ready to invest in yourself? When are you ready to invest in your business? You know, you don't exist if you don't have photos online these days. So if you are going to open up shop, you've, that's the time to start. That's the time to get your headshot or your branding images or even, you know, you need a storefront photo if you're um, a brick and mortar shop. And if you're listening to the show today and you want to know how to find the best photographer. She is right here, right now. Holly, I'd love to ask you, what questions should people be asking to know that they have actually found the best photographer? Or what should they be looking for to know that they found the best of the best? Yeah, so I wanted to share a famous quote because this is the best way to answer this question. And the quote actually comes from Ansel Adams. And he said something along the lines of, for every photograph, there are two parts. 
the photographer and the viewer. So the way I relate that to hiring a photographer is you've got to find someone that you feel a connection with or that you feel like you can trust because you have to be vulnerable to be photographed, right? It's a it's kind of an intimate experience. So find someone you're comfortable with, you have a good rapport with, you need to at least have a phone conversation to have that kind of discernment opportunity. And then of course, there's your budget. And frankly, there's so much talent out there at every price point. So find someone you connect with first, someone whose work you love, and then what fits for your budget. That makes a lot of sense. And as a human, Holly, so much information in a photograph or a video. One, I mean, it's I as a business owner, you see one picture and it says, they say a picture says a thousand words. It's true. You get a feeling when you see a picture, unlike just a statement. So what a necessity for any business or professional. In your opinion, how do you use professional photographs to elevate your online uh, reputation? Yeah, so great question. For me personally, you know, I'm a photographer, so I don't need to show myself so much. I need to show examples of my work, right? That's like the strongest thing. But then in this day and age, especially I'd say in the last two years, being present in my business is important. And it's so funny, I feel uncomfortable in front of the camera. <laughs> and so I've had to hire other photographers to capture behind the scenes, me working with clients. And then I've had to get really good at like taking a professional time to selfie with the pro gear um, because of the distance needs and whatnot of availability of other photographers. So I like to show my work. I like to show how I interact with clients. Isn't that interesting? But it makes sense for the person that's behind the camera. They might be the ones that don't want to be in front of the camera as much. So uh, that makes sense. So what should someone do to prepare for a professional photo shoot? Yes. So it all comes down to self-care, honestly. You know, you you know your body the best. So if you're the type of person who likes to get facial waxing or you're somebody who shaves, um, you have facial hair, you need to shave, you know what the best timing is for that. So schedule out your self-care so you really shine and you know you're going to feel confident and like you look your best. I recommend for, for example, haircuts to schedule your haircut one to two weeks before your photo session. That way it gives you a little bit of time to settle it, get used to styling it, especially if you're going for a change. And then if you're going to get a facial, notice your skin. Do not get your first facial the day of your photo shoot. <laughs> that actually happened once. And um, yeah, so self-care and then try to get a good night's sleep the night before. I know it can be hard, but that goes a long way. And hydration. And I was going to say, yeah, just when you said try to get a nice sleep and don't stress out because when you stress out, you don't look as good and you're not going to be relaxed and be able to be your best in front of the camera. So get, I like how you said, get a nice, great sleep, do some meditation, little inspiration before your photographer gets there and you'll be all good. Right, Holly? Yes. I like how you said what makes you feel good too, because everybody feels good in something else. So something that you feel good in, I mean, some, per I love this sweater. Another person would be like, ugh, that sweater. So don't try to be somebody else. Be yourself. That's really great advice. And when you, when you feel like you look good, it exudes from you, which I can imagine translates into fantastic photos. So what great advice. Speaking of uh, this sweater, what the heck should you wear during a photo shoot? Yeah, so this question is wonderful. And it's something that I always include in a consultation. So I ask clients, you know, what are your branding colors? What is your business logo? What does it look like? Because we can play with colors in your wardrobe to kind of reinforce and um, exemplify like who you are and your personality. So what should you wear depends on your industry. If you're, for example, um, a landscaper, you're always in coveralls or overalls, wear that to your photo shoot, but make sure they're clean, <laughs> right? Um, however, if you're a corporate attorney, show up like you do with clients in the courtroom, make sure you've got a nice pressed dress shirt and maybe you have a fun tie that, that um, exemplifies or amplifies, I mean, your branding colors. Yeah, that's, um, I've had a, a lot of professional uh, photo shoots in my career and the, the multiple businesses that I uh, own, and I've used the images in a lot of different platforms, even when one's been taken for something else, you know, whether I brought it into my keynote speaking page, or I've then used the same one for additional pictures on my coaching uh, website. What other creative ways can you repurpose and reuse these photos? 
Yeah, that's a great question. And I love seeing people use their photos in different ways. One of the ways I like to think of um, your headshot, your professional portrait is think of it like your company logo or your business logo. You know, where are you putting those? And then can you add an image? You know, I know someone who's um, a wealth advisor and besides sending out the postcard with an annual reminder about something, she includes her headshot on there. And that just really stands out in the mail. You know, you get these, these mailers and if there's just, you know, branded imagery on there, you're like, toss, toss. And you're like, oh, I remember her. I had not even recall, right? It connects you right away. So postcards, they're not a lost art. Um, as well as anytime you're on social media, you know, photos really catch attention. So if you want to share a, um, an update or an inspirational quote or something like along those lines, add your photo. And postcards and sorry, uh, uh, Keelan, postcards oh. and mail, it's not a lost art because majority are not doing it. So why not stand out and actually have something that physically comes in the mail? They can look at it, it's colorful. And oh, by the way, it has your picture there from your professional photography photo shoot that you did. So yeah, great suggestions, Holly. I was going to ask you, Holly, obviously nowadays where you take the most pictures of yourself is going to be on your social media. People post everything on there. And a lot of times, you know, the photos come out a little bit blurry. Give me some advice on how you sharpen that up. Oh, this is such a fun question because I actually teach people how to do better cell phone photography. <laughs> <laughs> so um, figure out how to use your cell phone. Figure out what the tools are. Um, so on the iPhone, for example, the easiest thing is to press first exactly where you want it to focus and then take the photo because what it does is it automatically focuses on you and it also adjusts the lighting. Now, Samsung and other um, Android type cameras have different tools built in, but play with it figure out what is it? Is it that you're not, you're too close? If you're too close, often that's the most common issue when you get a blurry selfie. It's so funny that you asked that question, Keelan, because I obviously didn't have the best of the best photographer for this photo shoot. It was for the, uh, for my, my book when my book was launched. And if I knew you, Holly, I would have called you. Uh, the pictures came back and they were beautiful pictures. I wanted to have it out at a uh, remote and abandoned um, uh, railroad. And, you know, so we, he got the perfect place. However, it was one of those Seattle days where it wasn't sunny, but the sun was in the clouds. And so my eyes were all squinted in some of the pictures that I love the most. So I brought it to back to Victoria, our director of marketing, and she had me turn to the exact side that I was where my eyes were looking like this. She took my phone and she took a picture of my eyes and then she actually replaced my eyes of that picture onto the actual picture uh, the photographer took. So it was awesome. My book looks amazing. The combination of Victoria stepping in, but another reason why you want to have the best of the best to make sure that they capture uh, everything thing that you want. Absolutely. Yeah. And actually I was going to ask you a question. I just kind of went on a, a little uh, story there. So how should you decide uh, the photos that you should use Holly? Yeah. So it depends on your purpose, right? What do you want to say to the world? And think in terms of like your photos are reinforcing and supporting your words. So what is it that you want to say? What do you want to share? How do you want to connect with people? Those determine the kinds of photos that you want to capture with your photographer. Um, so for example, let's say you're um, a coach or a therapist. I'm going to pick on Kathy here a little bit. Um, she might want to show people like what it's like in her space when they can meet in person again. What does that look like? What does the room look like? Maybe she's sitting there and you have a model stage to look like a client shooting over the shoulder of the client to see Kathy's smiling or calm, peaceful, um, focused face, taking notes, something along the lines of that. Uh, it just reinforces your story. I love this creativity exuding from you. You can see the passion right now. And I'm already like picturing it. And which is what you want your people to do too. You want them to picture them sitting there and kind of visualizing what that's like, because it's something that's going to attract them to your business. So what a smart move, Holly. Uh, what about free stock photography? Are we allowed to use free stock photography? You can, um, but I will say that I always caution people with that. There have been a lot of issues with people um, stealing images for their free stock library that they offer the public. Um, so I would say if you're going to use one, make sure it's a reputable company um, that has really good reviews. Maybe they have a paid section and then a free section. That means that they probably have a staff that's vetting the images and verifying um, that they are truly free to use. 
You know, we see that a lot. We work with a lot of fantastic agents and, you know, of all kinds, new, uh, you know, the best of the best. And uh, we always have to tell them a little bit about that because sometimes they just get free with blasting images out there and you can end up in some pretty hot water for that. Yeah, it can be very expensive in the long run. Yeah, and speaking of real estate agents and real estate markets, sometimes if you're not working with the best of the best agent, they think they can go a little bit not as a lower investment on homes and they're going to get less value. So if you think about that in the hottest real estate market uh, that I've been in in my 26 years, it, that homes are, will sell less money if you don't have the best of the best images, even though it's such a hot market. And that would be the same, uh, Holly, with us and how we're presenting ourselves in our marketing material on our website, correct? Yes, it shows. It really shows whether you're invested in yourself or not. Yes. Yeah. Be invested in yourself and uh, connect with Holly for your images. So people see the lovely person that you are from first glance, uh, connect with Kathy. So you can create the best place for yourself so that you can do magical things uh, and share your gift with the world. Uh, we'd like to take the opportunity to thank both of you for being a guest. Holly, thank you for coming into the show. Thank you, Tina. Thank you, Keelan. And Kathy, thank you. Thank you both again. I've really enjoyed it. And I am Tina Mitchell signing off for the day. And we have your co-host, Keelan Harvey. We are your local mortgage experts. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you for being here and listening to our show. We'll be back next week to talk a little bit about more about your money right here on 1150 AM KKNW. Tina Mitchell, MLO 145420, and Keelan Harvey, MLO 133075, are licensed loan originators with Highlands Residential Mortgage Limited, NMLS 134871. The views expressed by the speakers on the preceding program are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of Highlands Residential Mortgage Limited.